comet Ison's day of reckoning is nearly upon us. The comet will reach its closest point to the sun on Thursday, and all bets are off as to whether or not the comet is going to make its journey around the sun. Joining me today is Don Mockles. He's the comet hunter, and he's going to talk to us about what could be the celestial event of the century. All right, Don Mockles, the comet hunter, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for inviting me, Leanne. So when ISON was discovered in 2012, it was uh, shining really brightly, and it prompted some astronomers to say that it could be the comet of the century, eventually possibly glowing in the night sky as bright as our own moon. But what does that look like now? Well, some of those predictions were perhaps uh, over overstated. Uh, the comet will get bright and is getting brighter. However, at the time it's at its brightest, it's, it's very close to the sun as seen from the Earth, so it's hard, hard to see right now. Uh, but it's behaving pretty well on track. There is some indication uh, with the recent outburst that it had um, about a week and a half ago that um, that outburst in brightness, which brightened it quite a bit, um, it's kind of calmed down since then. So we'll have to watch over the next few days to see if it uh, starts to dim as it gets closer to the sun or if it continues to brighten. Mm. And so what, what's actually causing it to be the brightness and, and the dimming? And I know that this one actually had, I think, six tails at one time. What was causing that? And is that, is that common? is like a dirty snowball and this one has a nucleus or the center of it is a snowball that's about three miles across and as it moves closer to the sun um, it, it begins to brighten and when it goes half the distance to the sun from any distance a, a typical comet will get 16 times brighter this particular comet has an orbit that brings it really 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 close to the sun and so if you do the math and if it behaves normally, it will get really, really bright. Uh, and it might have a very nice long tail. It's coming in on the morning side of the sun, so it can best be seen in the morning. It's going to whip around the sun on Thanksgiving Day, the 28th of, of November, and then back into the morning sky where it can best be seen uh, in, in the morning before, before morning twilight. And so as far as having a lot of tails, uh, you know, Ison, is this a rare occurrence with the multiple tails, or is that something that you, you've seen a lot with your work? Well, usually a comet will have two tails, an ion tail, which is kind of like a gas tail, and a dust tail. The dust tail is forming very nicely. The ion tail we've had for a little while already. Um, it's had some extensions off on the side of the nucleus, and astronomers are kind of wondering what those are. They really aren't calling them tails, they're calling them more like wings. And um, mm -hmm. some comets seem to display that. It might be due to matter coming off of certain portions of the nucleus as it rotates. Um, material comes off of it in unequal areas. So that might be causing that. Mm. So this is probably very exciting as an astronomer, someone that kind of looks to the sky, this seems to be kind of a rare occurrence in our century. It is rare that a comet comes that close to the sun of this size. Mm -hmm. There are sun grazers that are found on the SOHO satellite images. They're very much smaller than this and much, much fainter. Mm -hmm. But this, uh, this comet uh, has been coming in for millions of years, and it only got bright enough to see when it got a little bit past uh, Jupiter's orbit, between Jupiter and Saturn's orbit was where it was discovered. And by then it had become bright enough that it could be picked up with a telescope and a very sensitive camera. At that time, it was still beyond reach of most of our telescopes to visually observe. Uh, I began to see it as it got closer to the sun about two months ago in the morning sky, as did many other amateurs. Um, in the last few days, it's been visible in binoculars in, uh, to the unaided eye. However, beginning about two days ago, it was so much in the twilight that it was difficult to see. So now the only imaging that's done is by... Um, radio telescope and by satellites that orbit the sun and do not have to uh, 
are not interfered with by the atmosphere of the Earth. So as the comet gets closer to the sun, how come it hasn't melted already? It is in the process of melting, as all comets do. As they move closer to the sun and get hotter, the material, the solid material on the snowball sublimes or turns directly into the gas, which forms the head of the comet and the tail of the comet. But the nucleus generally remains intact. One concern raised by astronomers over the last few days is that perhaps the uh, brightening event of about 10 days ago might have been caused by a fragment breaking off of the nucleus. Mm. That doesn't mean the nucleus itself has broken into many, many pieces, but sometimes a piece will break off and we have a, a temporary brightening. Uh, over time, over the next few days, we'll see if the comet continues to brighten or if it starts to, to dim. It should be brightening until Thanksgiving when it gets closest to the sun. After that, as it moves away from the sun, it should naturally dim. And then, so the so ISON is moving really fast, 248 miles per second toward the sun. It's going to uh, reach its closest point of proximity to the sun on Thanksgiving Day. What happens if it gets sucked into the gravitational pull of the sun? Is that a possibility? And what would happen if that was the case? It's unlikely the course will change so much such that it will be drawn into the sun. It will miss the sun, uh, and, and it's expected to, and it will stay on track. The question is, what part of it's going to survive? Mm -hmm. uh, a breakup of the nucleus would cause the comet to become even brighter for a while as more and more material is exposed to the sun. If, on the other hand, the nucleus begins to dissolve, and just break down into tiny particles, we may not have a very bright comet after it rounds the sun. If it stays intact, we may have a pretty good show in the morning sky after it rounds the sun. And so let's say that it does make that journey around intact. What is it going to look like? I know right now it's, it's mostly being seen in the southern hemisphere. And then as December uh, rolls in, we'll be able to see it in the northern hemisphere. What do, you, what do you think that we might be able to see with the naked eye? We've been having a, a good view of it in both the northern and southern hemisphere for the last couple months. The comet with the unaided eye might put on a pretty good show the first uh, middle of the first week of December. You have to get up in the morning about an hour, an hour and a half before dawn or before sunrise while the sky is still fairly dark and you need to be away from city lights and have a good low eastern horizon. And uh, the tail of the comet will rise first uh, followed by the head of the comet. Um, the tail could be pretty long. Uh, the geometry would favor that we, would, we, we could see a fairly long tail of uh, 10, 20 degrees. But that depends upon several things, the way the comet behaves, and comets are unpredictable. Uh, your skies, you need to have dark skies to see the comet well, and how well your eyes are adapted and used to being able to see uh, faint objects. Well, then I guess we will definitely be looking forward to that, keeping our fingers crossed that it makes its journey around the sun. Don, you've discovered 10 comets, is that correct? And how, how did you become a comet hunter? <laughs> uh, I've discovered, uh, visually, I've discovered 11 comets mm. in, in the last mm. uh, 35 years, since 1975. And um, I do that by scanning the sky with my telescope and looking through the eyepiece for uh, faint fuzzy objects. Most of them are galaxies or clusters, but sometimes one would be a new comet. I then reported it to the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory for confirmation. Uh, comet Ison was found by amateurs also, but they were using a camera connected to the telescope, and it can see much, much fainter than I can visually. Mm. So what, are there any perks to discovering a comet? Well, uh, your name is attached to the comet. Um, the orbit is determined by the Smithsonian, so once you discover it and report it, uh, your, your job is done. They, they handle it from there. Um, I have a couple comets that I've discovered that come by every five years. One of them also goes very close to the sun, not quite as close as ISON, but every five years it puts on a pretty good show as it goes around the sun. 
Which one is that? What's it's the Mackles? Oh, I'm sorry, the Mackles. Uh, 1985. We got the 1988. 1986 uh, E. 1986. Also, e. Uh, yeah, also known as P96 or periodic comet Mackles one. Ooh, so exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, are you going to be holding any public viewing events for Comet Ison or live streaming? We uh, there's a group of astronomers in the area here, and we set up telescopes and invite the public to come out and look through our telescopes. On Saturday, December 7th, we'll be uh, out in the pre-dawn skies in Auburn, California, setting up our telescopes to show people not just the comet, the planet Saturn will be out, the moon will be out, things like that too, but we'll be showing comet ice on then. If it continues to put on a good show, we'll be scheduling other star parties. And uh, there are astronomy clubs around the world that are setting, going to be setting up telescopes to show people the comet. The biggest problem is it is in the morning. It's not, not in the evening, so you have to get up early and, and go out to watch it. Yeah, that's the big problem for me is <laughs> getting up a few <laughs> hours before the sunrise. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, and definitely we'll check out the comethunter.com and see if you have any new photos for us once it makes its journey around the sun. Thank you, Don. Thank you. If you need anything else, let me know. Take care now. Take care. Now you can watch the Alex Jones Show live as it happens at infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at infowars.com slash show.